All right, episode three, here we go. I just finished it. I'm not gonna bore you with the same intro that I've been doing. You should probably understand what I'm doing right now is I'm reviewing all 11 Star Wars, and this was episode three. And I'm gonna start out with talking about the central character, like I always do, which this time was Anakin again. And he's not really looked down upon as far as where he was in the second movie. Uh, in the first one he was kind of feared for he was the unknown. The second one he was looked down upon because Obi-Wan thought that he was better or was supposed to be better than him, but then he was supposed to train him so he was kind of conflicted and then you get to episode 3 with a kind of equal even though he is Obi-Wan is a Jedi master on the council and Anakin is still a knight. Uh, speaking of Obi-Wan, he is now graduated I would say from being the mentor character of episode two, but now being the reflection character. He is the one that tells Anakin what is up, what he's supposed to be doing, and he checks him at almost any point needed. And you can see that constantly throughout the movie. Padme was still the love interest, but she wasn't used as much as I would have liked her to. Uh, you saw her in the first two movies, and she was used quite a lot. And in the first one, she was kind of like this big type of role and she was strong, she was powerful as far as in her own skin and then you get to episode 2 where she's now being threatened and she's starting to cower a little bit and then in episode 3 she's just kind of there and used to move the plot along rather than actually being a part of the story itself. The only thing she was really used for was the carry of the babies is essentially what they said which I did not agree with and I wish they could have used her a little bit more Plain and simple, Grievous and Palpatine were the shadows, the antagonists. Grievous more so than Palpatine until the very end of whenever we get to the approaching of the innermost cave and the innermost cave and the ending of Act 2 whenever we get Vader or Anakin turning into Vader and then execution of Order 66 is when Palpatine was shown as the real villain. Uh, now let's get into the story. Uh, I love the story. This is oh, probably my favorite Star Wars movie to date. There have been a lot of stuff that, oh, I like that from these movies, but this was the first movie I remember seeing in theaters. My mom pulled me out of school with my brother and said, your education can wait. Star Wars is important. Let's go. And we went, and I loved it then, and I love it now. There's nothing that tells me that this is a bad movie. There might be bad moments, but eh. Uh, Beggars can't be choosers. There's no such thing as a perfect film, but it does give me my very or my favorite open, or opening sentence to the opening crawl. If you don't remember what it is, don't worry. It was literally just the word "war." Sums everything up perfectly because they are at the the high point of the war of the Clone Wars, and I love that first sentence. The CGI fighter chase scene through the capital ships to open it up was I believe at the time was the longest fully CGI scene in cinema history. I could be wrong but I loved the choreography of the, the fighters of Anakin and Obi-Wan and then the explosions and the battles and things that happened around them completely being CGI'd. I absolutely loved it. Um, another thing to talk about is the change of the outlook towards the ending of the movie uh, and they did it in kind of a subtle but not so subtle way of changing it from the opening where Anakin was still a Jedi Knight and then working with the Jedi, working for the Jedi and wanting the Jedi to be the good guys and then he falls and then it's almost immediately the Jedi are now evil, Sith are good and you get that tonality shift even though there's parts of the story still being told by Obi-Wan and Yoda and then Vader and you see it and I like the way that they handled it. They handled it in probably the best way I could see possible. Uh, I love them giving personality to the droids. Obviously they are machines, they don't really have souls or anything of that nature, but I feel like giving them a personality, being them like a C-3PO and stuff, but the battle droids can now have that type of personality as C-3PO, I love that. Um, I feel that the best scene of this movie was one that people, I don't know, were kind of off on? or kind of like indifferent I guess which was when Anakin was told or just told Mace that he was or learned about Palpatine being a Sith Lord and Mace told him to go to the, uh, the council chamber and while in that council chamber he is conflicted he is he's not knowing like what do I do he's begging for guidance he's begging for something more and then you get the uh, this nicely shot 
back and forth between Anakin and Padme where it's like they're looking at each other and having this silent conversation with a, a very quiet voiceover from Palpatine saying that you know that if they kill me, she will die kind of thing. Uh, I feel something that people don't really necessarily look at from this movie and I don't know if it's just me reaching or me wanting it to be something was the lighting around Anakin. Whenever you see him being very conflicted on what is good, what is bad, who am I, what, is, what am I supposed to do, there's usually this split between lights and shadows. Like whenever he's talking to Master Yoda after first hearing of, or having the dream about Padme's death, he goes to Master Yoda and he's sitting in that little meditation room, that council room, and he's split between the light and the dark. You see whenever Anakin and Obi-Wan split for the final time before their epic conversation at the end of this movie. And he is shrouded in darkness because the light, aka Obi-Wan, has just broken away from him for the final time. And I don't know if that's just me reaching, that's just not, or if that's just me wanting it to be there. But I liked it. Uh, I feel that a lot, the little subtleties of this movie goes a long way to explaining this movie, like the flames when Obi-Wan kills Grievous, acted like the blood of Grievous. Because this is a PG-13 movie and you can't really have over amounts of blood. That was a great way to kind of say, okay, this is his blood. And I, I like that. Uh, and I do, th this is my personal fan theory. This has not been confirmed nor denied, in my opinion, by Lucasfilms. I think that with the release of the new movie that I won't go into for spoiler reasons, I feel that the ending and Vader being born into the suit is confirmed that Palpatine killed Padme. Because almost the exact moment that Vader first breathes, even though it's shot a little bit different because they wanted they didn't get the split screen of Anakin and Padme both at the same moment. They want it was kind of implied that these two moments happened at the same time. Anakin breathes or Vader, I should say, breathes into his mask for the first time, and you hear that iconic breathing sound that we heard through the original trilogy. And then you go, you get cut back to Padme dying. So she dies in childbirth, and you kind of see the Palpatine smirk after this moment, and after telling Vader that Padme died, but he told him that it was his doing whenever he forced choked her, is what was assumed. But I feel that it was Palpatine pulling the life force from Padme, putting it into Anakin. Because the droid said, for reasons we can't explain, she's dying and we're losing her, even though she's in perfect health. That, that, you, I don't think that you can die of a broken heart. I don't. And obviously this is in the galaxy far, far away, so our, our thought processes might not be the correct processes for this type of uh, movie and this type of galaxy that these characters are living in, but just because somebody breaks your heart, changes and leaves you doesn't mean you're going to necessarily die, so I don't know if you can actually die from the broken heart, so that's why I feel that having him be the reason she dies is a lot more powerful than just, oh, she dies. Um, but to wrap this up, the last one for this trilogy before my next video, which will be a recap of this entire trilogy and what I thought of the story arc. Um, this video, or this movie I should say, gave me everything I wanted to lead in to episode 4. This gave me, how did v or Yoda and Obi-Wan survive Order 66? How did Anakin have to be put into that, uh, the suit? How did Palpatine rise to power and take over the galaxy? It gave us everything. Why was Luke and Leia split up? And all this stuff. And it gave us it in a more s the easiest way possible with the story that was given is the best way to phrase it there could have been better ways to do it there could have obviously if you go with my first thought on the episode one of switching the time when it starts this could have been changed completely there are other pro videos like that on the internet so i'm not going to talk into that and steal their thunder but that is my review of episode three later today will be the release of my Pre uh, trilogy, prequel trilogy recap review all that good stuff so don't worry in a few hours the next video will be out i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you enjoyed 
my review of episodes 1, 2, and 3, and I really hope that you come back to watch my recap of the entire trilogy and what I thought of it as a story itself. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day if you don't come back, or if you come back at a later day. Thank you for watching my videos and giving me something to do outside of classwork. I'll talk to you later.